at this time, we have offensive lineman Nick Malone. Questions for Nick, Greg? So, Nick, has it hit you that it's senior day and what your emotions are going to be when you walk out in the field and all those kind of things? It's uh, over the last few weeks, it's definitely hit, but I don't think it'll truly hit till I hear my name called and dap up Coach Mike and dap up Coach Brown and run out there. I think that's when it'll truly set in. It's the last game your mom's missed. Has it ever happened? Any game I've ever played in, football, basketball, whatever sport, she's she's been a part of. I was going to say, I follow her on Facebook and you see all this stuff. (laughs) It's too, but I mean, just to speak to that, how you know your mom has been so invested in your career and is so proud of you. No, yeah, it's uh, she's definitely been a big part of it, especially starting in a little league for Evansville Tigers. I never went to practice with dirty pads and any pants, nothing, jersey, everything was washed. She was any sport, like I said, football, basketball, always been a big part of it, big supportive, and probably half you guys have seen what she says on Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, well, she's proud of you. Oh, yeah. I'm lucky. What does that do for you psychologically? I mean, it's one thing like when you're seven and and mom's there. Now you're 21, 22, and mom's there. Is it is it does it feel different? Is there a different kind of you know emotion that comes through because now you're older, you're you're more you know uh, you're further into your career, and mom's still there. Uh, I would say a little bit of both. Uh, it's kind of the same aspect of when you're young, you always want to improve and impress them. So I kind of went along with it now and kind of I just play play for my family, play for them because without them I wouldn't be here and kind of I always uh, want to put on performance that will really impress them because if I do good for them, it's really all that matters. What does securing a bowl game mean for you, obviously, it wasn't the, the goal entering the season for the team, but yeah, it's uh, we want to get that six win. You want to go to the postseason. That's always a goal, no matter if you're going to Dallas, you're going to a bowl game, whatever doesn't matter. You just want to try to win games as much as possible. But especially for me, last year, you kind of you want to go out with a boom, and that's what we're going to try to do. These last two games is win them and go to the postseason. Do you feel there's a heightened sense of urgency now that you like you're, you're trying to get that that six win? There's two games left to do it. And you know, like I said, the the, the menu's smaller. Like this, I'd say I'd say yes and no because now there's the two games left. There's a lot of less room for errors in that sense. But I think we're kind of the big thing I say all the time is we stay consistent. So for a line, that's kind of what we have to do here. We kind of we can't uh, we can't score more than uh, all I'm trying to say is you can't have a you can only have a one big play at a time. So we have to kind of pace it out, take our time. Don't try to go all out in one play and kind of just go the path. I know you studied them on tape, yeah, but were you a little surprised at how good Baylor was? I mean, particularly, obviously, you're standing on the field um, when the offense is out there, but uh, some of the size of the wide receivers that they had and some of the explosive players that they had, a little surprising? I would say surprising, but they're definitely a good team. We watch film and kind of what they do to different teams, we kind of try to exploit that, kind of do our own piece of that, but yeah. they definitely had good players and the, it showed. I know it's only Monday, but what do you think of UCF? Uh, it's early, but they're uh, they're kind of the same boat as us, kind of fighting to get that uh, six win in their book. But uh, they're a good team. They're gonna they're gonna blitz. They're gonna move. They're gonna do all that base stuff that everybody's trying to done to us. So yeah, reflect on your career. I mean, uh, I mean, it's been very long. Yeah. When you got here, COVID wasn't even known, mm-hmm. right? So. Mm-hmm. Walk me through everything that's happened from walk on to the extra year to, to all that. Yeah, so started true freshman, got here, like I, the story, got here at 260. Mm-hmm. Kind of didn't do much. We did that basic freshman duties of scout practice and did all that stuff. Learned a lot from Colt McKivitz in the early years. And then uh, COVID hit, and then we had the COVID year. So that was kind of a lot more learning, a lot less doing as well. And then kind of as the year's gone on, it's that's when the special teams roles came upon me and uh, did that, did the field goal, did punt. And then the past year, did a lot of more offensive line stuff, extra tight end, tackle, that kind of stuff. And then now's the, the grand finale, the big role starting and actually doing uh, more. So it's, yeah. it's been a ride. How do you create your own performance this year? I think I've held my own. I think I've exceeded my own expectations and Kind of that's that's why I kind of try to do every week is do better than the next than the week before. You know, uh, 
this team is kind of hunting for that three-phase game. You know, there's, yeah. there's a game when the offense plays well. There's been a game when the defense has played well, special teams. But it's never really come together. Why do you think that is and what needs to happen for that to happen? I think, yeah, like you said, there's never been a game where we've all done three. But I think I think time will tell. We always say, we go into the game saying we want all three phases to do well. Right. And I think it's I think it's just the little things, especially this past week. You could tell that uh, for O-line example, sometimes we'd miscommunicate, and that's why they'd have a TFL on some cases. And I can't speak for the D-line, but sometimes they have communication errors as well. And special teams, some people get out of their lanes for kickoff uh, kickoff example so it's kind of it's just the little details that if we clean up I believe we'll have a this this coming game and then that one after that and then the postseason after that will be all three phases when you say communication is it a willingness to communicate is it the guys communicating the wrong things uh, I think it's a little bit of we motion and shift a lot so that means they're going to motion and shift a lot so there's a there's a lot of moving pieces that you never know if they're going to stop there or uh, gap exchange or shift right. that kind of stuff so it's a lot of a lot of moving parts that go on. What's your goal when football's over? What do you want to do? Football's over. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to think. Uh, kind of just what I've been done uh, doing now, being part of the Chambers League Climbers, there's a lot of a lot of past with that. I built a lot of relationships. John Chambers still texts every month, at least talking to me and that kind of stuff. Uh, Dave Groover, with, uh, he always stays in contact with us and kind of just I feel like a business path would be my path if once football's done. Referee basketball. You don't want to follow that line? I don't think I can do that. <laughs> Too much. I don't think uh, I'd be good for that sport now. Not for me. Think of somebody from Worrytown who's been to games for a while just to, to just to see the fate you guys have had in home games this season where had good opponents, had opportunities, and it's going to end up sub-500 there. Um, Especially a bummer for someone like you, or is that just kind of like a, a thing across the locker room, like, man, it could have been better? I think a little bit of both, especially being from Morgantown. I know the fans, and they want us to win. I want us to win, and we didn't do that. And it's kind of it's a letdown for them and a huge letdown for us. So that's why we want to go out this last game and put on the performance they deserve, and hopefully we'll come out the outcome we deserve as well. To, to, to that, I mean, you guys have played so much better on the road. It's kind of puzzling. You know, and then you look at you know some of the performances that you had. You had four. You've had four double-digit losses at home, and yet you played so well. What, what can you put a finger on that? I don't know. It's just I, I don't know the part of it. It's just we play well on the road, and I wish we could translate that what we do on the road and translate it to here. But I just not, don't have an answer for that one. fans don't realize? I think, especially, let's say, when our fans get loud, it's it's very, you can tell. The opposing team has trouble. You get false starts on them for their offensive line, that kind of stuff. Our fans play a huge part, and that's the kind of thing we want to uh, reiterate is that we want to do well for them, so that creates the momentum for our defense, which keeps the crowd going and creates a more hostile environment for the other team. So it's kind of a win-win for us if we're doing well and it keeps going. Back to when you were a kid sitting in the stands or whatever and watching the games and how much you idolized the guys and now you're one of those guys out there. You ever think of that responsibility to little kids and oh, stuff like that? Oh yeah, I definitely. I remember sitting in the stands. I was uh, right before I got here. I was in the stands for the uh, what was the snowy game? One of the big snowy games. I remember. I was like, I'm gonna be there next year. I'm gonna be running out with the team. I'm gonna be doing this and that. It was kind of. It was a surreal moment going from the stands to playing and kind of hope I set that example for other people as well that they're around here in West Virginia that you have the opportunity and you can do the same thing. Does that put an extra, do you, you probably don't want to put any extra pressure on yourself, but is there extra pressure you, that you feel is on yourself because you're local? Like you just said earlier, it's like, I know the fans here because you, know, you, you, you grew up with them. You, these are your friends, these are your neighbors. Like, how, what is that like to be a Morgantown guy and be a representative of this university and a representative of this football team?
Yeah, I feel I feel there's a lot more pressure, especially being from Morgantown and kind of being from the state. As people on the team, being from West Virginia, you want to be able to represent your state in a way that we win, we do well, and I feel like there's definitely more pressure on us because you don't want to have a bad show and be like, oh, West Virginia can't produce, they can't do this and that. So I feel like there's a lot, there's a heightened pressure, but I feel like we've done pretty well in that area. Nick, what's been one of your favorite moments uh, from your time here in this program off the field that maybe we wouldn't know about? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I think one of the biggest things is when we go to the uh, children's hospital on Fridays before games, that is, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world and there's a lot, a lot, ooh, there's a lot less things that are uh, bad going on and we're just playing football and people over there have real struggles and things going on and kind of bringing light to them and kind of being the sunshine in their day. That's one of the, the highlights of that's got, we've done. To her question, two games left, but is there one game that you think about uh, that, yeah, this was you know, this was a special moment, special memory, something that's going to be meaningful to you? I think, I think when we played Penn State the very first game, because that was a big game for us. We didn't win, obviously, but it was kind of my very first true start in the role that I'm in now, and I was able to show what I could do against top-notch uh, talent and show my abilities. I think that was one of the moments. Great, thank you. Thank you.